Hello all, I'm going to make a video on testing the circuitry of a motherboard off a laptop. Now, this is a Fujitsu motherboard, which is in full working order, this particular board. But we're going to test the, the circuitry of the charging circuit. Now on this particular board, this is the charging circuit down here. Let's move it up so you can see a bit better. So this is the charging circuit along here. So basically what we've got, we've got the main components on the charging circuit. Now we've got the DC power jack in, which then goes through a little coil that's down here, which you probably can't see at the moment, but you'll see when we're zoomed in in a little while. And then it comes through this coil, through this fuse, through a transistor, into this coil which then goes on to this chip now this chip here is the charging chip and you'll have an input voltage of 19 volts and an output voltage of about 5 volts so you need to check the input and output on that as well so we're going to we're going to run through this circuitry on how to test each component and which pin to look for the voltage now what you need to remember is that on a circuit diagram, you'll look at the diagram that, that's relevant to that board. Now not all charging circuits will be laid out in a continuous line like this one. This is just a good, good example that uh, shows us how we can test the components. And it's quite easy one to follow because it's laid out virtually as it comes through the components. So what you've got to remember is that when you when you do uh, testing of uh, charging circuits on motherboards or any any component on a motherboard, is that you'll have a drawing specific to that board. So if I show you on this board how to test uh, the components, when you look at a different board, you'll go, hmm, that doesn't look the same. But that doesn't matter because if you can read the drawing and recognize the components and also read the uh, the component ID numbers then you, you haven't got a problem whatsoever because all you've got to do is look at the drawing and say the voltage goes through there it then goes through this now what would happen if it went through this okay we should still have 19 volts so on so on so on now in the, in the case of the charging circuit we've got 19 volts all the way up to the charging chip now once beyond the charging chip we've then got five volts which then is amplified up to 10 volts um, which gives us our 10, 10 volt output so that's basically the, uh, the the fundamentals of a charging circuit as i say it's quite a simple circuit uh, all laptop motherboard circuits will be pretty similar um, they may have um, different components, the component placement might be different, the component ID numbers might be different, but the, the circuit is pretty much the same. So it's just a case of looking at the drawing, following the drawing, and checking different components at different pins. Now on some of these boards you will have test points, like this, this little um, chip here is as tiny as you can see from this flathead screwdriver. This is a small flathead and you can see how small that chip is but on this board as you'll see when i zoom in that there'll um these little test points within the board um which are just little solder points for testing where you can get your probes and test now the probes that i'm using are these are homemade probes because i couldn't get any small enough when i was looking for some so basically what i've got i've got two probes the same here and i don't know if you can see that it's basically the probe is a pin it's the size of a pin on the end and that's ideal then just for getting onto these uh, these pads just to do some testing so that's basically what we've got and that just plugs into a standard test meter this is the test meter that we'll be using and it's just a standard test meter with your normal voltage range and we're going to be testing in DC volts and we know that the input voltage is 19 volts 
So I'm just going to set the range to 20 volts DC and we're going to test off the 20 volts DC range. So I'll get all that set up now and then we'll uh, we'll come back and see the the testing of the motherboard. Okay, so we're going to test the components now. So if we look on the drawing, we can see the DC jack, the inductor, which is down here, and the fuse. So these are the first three components we're going to test. Now we're going to test for an output voltage on the DC jack, and we're going to test for an input onto the inductor and an output off the inductor and an input and output on the fuse now after that it then goes onto this transistor uh, so this mosfet here we'll we'll check as well on the input and output so if you look at the drawing here the marked on the drawing we've got the dc jack we've got the inductor and we've got the fuse and the transistor. Okay, so if we look at the drawing now, we can see uh, the components that we've just looked at on the board. So I'll just zoom in a little bit onto this. He says. Okay, so if you look now, we can see then by this, this drawing that we've got the, the DC jack. So we've got the input on the DC jack. So we should have 19 volts on the output of the DC jack. And then we should have 19 volts on the incoming of this inductor. And we also have 19 volts on the output of the inductor. And then 19 volts on the input of the fuse. So you can see where we're going here. We're, we're just going along each component that's marked on the drawing and testing. So we're going to test test at uh, this point here. So this will be the DC jack coming in. That's the negative rail and that's the positive rail. We don't need to worry about the, the components in between these capacitors and uh, resistors. Um, the only thing we need to need to be concerned with is the DC jack the inductor, the fuse, and then we come across to this transistor, the MOSFET. So as you can see, I've marked on the drawer in the voltages in yellow here. So we've got 19 volts coming out of the jack. We've then got 19 volts coming into the inductor. It then comes out of the inductor, we should have 19 volts. And we should have 19 volts into the fuse, 19 volts out of the fuse. And we move along to the transistor. And if we look on pin 3, we're looking for pin 3 on the transistor. And in this case, they're all linked together. So pins 1, 2 and 3 are all joined together. So we're looking for 19 volts at pins 3, 2 and 1. And we're also looking for 19 volts out of pins 5, 6, 7 and 8. Okay. 19 volts this then comes into the ad pin okay so if we now look on the further on the drawing we're now looking for the ad pin bit so if we come down there we go ad pin adp in okay so we should have 19 volts that comes along comes down through this diode Just keep following it along and we've got DC in on pin number one <coughs> so on U16 we're looking for 19 volts at pin number one and then we go to the output then on pin 16 we should have an output the 5 volts and if we go along a bit further we then come up to this bit here 
which has got this transistor so we should have 5 volts here this then goes to the DC in and we just move up to find the DC in and DC in and that pack DC in So we've got the DC in, which is then this one here, <coughs> DC in, 19 volts, and uh, where are we? And then we've got this V pack, okay, this is where it connects here on the, up here. Not very well laid out these, but as you can see, the V pack then comes through to F2, so we should have, um, uh, we should have 10 volts here now because it's a voltage doubler um, it comes out of the uh, the charging chip 5 volts and then at a regulated 5 volts and then it uses a voltage doubler to give you 10 volts um, so that's basically it we, we then at pin uh, at fuse F2 so we're checking for 10 volts 10 volts out and pin 1 10 volts now if we've got voltage to all of these places everything's good now for example if we go back to the beginning and we will say we check for a voltage here at pin 1 out of the um, CN11 which is the DC jack and we haven't got 19 volts there then we'd suspect the DC jack or the power supply supplying the DC jack. Now if we've got 19 volts there what we do is we move along then to the to the next part and we'll test for 19 volts so we've got 19 volts at the coil we go to the other side of the coil oh we haven't got 19 volts there now why haven't we got 19 volts because that coil's gone but we've got if we had 19 volts there then what we do is we move along to the next bit which in this case is F1 so we've got a voltage going in check for a voltage out if we haven't got a voltage coming out obviously F1 is uh, the problem if we have got a voltage coming out we then move along to the MOSFET and we check for 19 volts in and we're also looking for 19 volts out and so on and then we'll just keep moving along so let's move back down to here so if we look the next component this resistor we should have 19 volts and we should have um, I think it's 19 volts coming out of this one uh, yeah 19 volts all the way up to this double shocky diode which is D20 and we're also going to check for a voltage at this diode D19 and out and we check for a, a voltage here now if we've got a voltage here but we haven't got a voltage here then this chip is the problem the failed chip okay so we should have a voltage in and a voltage out and it's the same with most components you should have a voltage in or a signal in and a signal out um, so we come along here and we go up and we should have uh, let's have a look we come out there it's five volts isn't it so we should have five volts out there five volts five volts and then we go to the V pack this is where it doubles the voltage here at this point and where are we and then we check again we should have 10 volts in this case here and if we've got 10 volts there but we haven't got it here then it's F2 and so on <coughs> so it's basically just a case of checking the components um, along along the circuit so what we'll do now I'll set up um, and get ready for testing now I'm going to put this video up as in, in a couple of parts um, so we'll call this part one and um, part two to follow. So thanks for watching. If you like my videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you subscribe, you'll get updates as and when we put new videos up. Uh, so thanks for watching and look out for part two where we'll be testing the board, testing the components and just checking for voltages. So thanks for watching. We'll see you again.